Well, the two key pieces of evidence that outweigh all other evidence are the flight data recorder and the cockpit voice recorder. These recordings are contained in so-called black boxes. Right now, they should be sending out pings to help crews find them. But those pings will stop in just a couple of weeks as the black box batteries run out. The United States has sent specialized equipment to try and find them. So why is it so important? And what are their limitations? CCTV correspondent Jim Spellman has that part of our story. The key to finding out what happened to Malaysian Air 370 may lie deep below the Indian Ocean. How important is it to investigators to find these black boxes? It's absolutely critical to locate these boxes. Roger Connor is a pilot and aviation expert with the Smithsonian Institution's Air and Space Museum. The black boxes, and they're not black, they're t they're, they've always been orange. Uh, they're designed to record critical flight data as well as cockpit conversations and sounds. And that data is then used to analyze aircraft accidents. The black boxes record detailed flight information including altitude, airspeed, rudder pedal position, and record cockpit conversations, but only the last two hours of audio. A lot of people are wondering, how come everybody has a phone that can store hours of video, thousands of songs, etc., but the black boxes, the voice recorders, can only hold two hours of audio? Well, one reason has to do with the labor unions of the airlines. Uh, they don't want to be taped for long periods of time because they are afraid that that's going to lead to some sort of uh, enforcement action based upon their cockpit contact. CCTV reached out to the Airline Pilots Association International Union for comment, but it did not return our calls. Black box technology dates back to the 1930s. The technology has changed over the years, and in the wake of the Malaysian Air 370 investigation, more changes could be coming. One approach, ejectable black boxes built to float that would be propelled away from the wreckage as a plane crashes. It would send this unit out, which would both act as a locator beacon. Uh, satellites would pick it up, know that a crash had occurred, where it is, and it would also serve as a duplicate copy, to some extent, of the other flight data recorders that would remain on the aircrafts. As part of an air traffic overhaul called NextGen, the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration will require planes to be tracked by satellite, but implementation is still years away. NASM 01, runway 1, clear for takeoff. Technology already exists to send back flight data and even live audio and video in real time. But this could cost fifty to $100,000 per plane to install. Do you think this incident with Malaysian Airlines is going to lead to some changes in the way the airlines, these governing bodies, approach this sort of thing? If this episode follows the historical model, uh, I think we're going to see some pretty significant legislation come out of this process. Potentially making future crash investigations much less difficult than the search for Flight 370. Jim Spellman, CCTV, Washington.